एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून एंड गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू अटेंडिंग द चेंज मेकर ट्वेंटी समिट We have had a successful run of sessions over the past 48 hours with numerous collaborations and insightful discussions. Your dedication to making a positive impact is truly inspiring. Today's prime slot highlight is the presence of Naveen Gulia, a motivational speaker, author and social activist who is known for his incredible journey and determination. His story revolves around empowering individuals to overcome challenges and his book Veer Usko Janiye is a testament to his commitment to motivating others to face life's adversities with courage and a positive outlook. Naveen Gulia's achievements are awe inspiring. He is not only an ex army officer but also a world record holder in adventure sports. His driving feat from New Delhi to the Masamak La, the highest mountain pass in the world at 18632 feet in just 55 hours of non-stop driving is a remarkable accomplishment. Beyond his adventures, Naveen Gulia is an accomplished writer having penned books in three different languages. His English book In Quest of the Last Victory and his Hindi book Veer Usko Janiye have both achieved great success. Additionally he is a dedicated social worker and runs the organization Apni Duniya Apna Aashiana which focuses on helping underprivileged children Naveen Gulia's long list of awards and recognitions includes the president's national role model award chief of army staff commendation times of india global indian award karamveer chakra cnn ibn real heroes award and many more These accolades reflect his immense contributions to various fields and his positive influence on society. I have no doubt that Naveen Gulia's words today will resonate deeply with all of you, leaving you inspired and motivated to tackle challenges with a determined spirit. Enjoy the session and the wisdom he shares. Thank you. Over to you sir. Uh, to begin with, a very good evening to you. I really do not have much claim to knowledge as such, and uh, it is the essence of knowledge that it has a value only till such time that we hold. humility flexibility and concede that we can be wrong as well now the topic for today social justice and inclusion even if i am wrong it would be better if i come forward with an idea that has not been talked about or presented before for the sake of a better discussion i will try to bring a different view point to what is being discussed now as for my records or books or whatever i might have achieved in my life those are phases gone from my life at present and my future is completely committed to my social service the time to give back to the society the phase of personal achievements are over we all have seen wildlife documentaries wherein uh, large group of thousands of wilder beasts antelopes are being chased by a group of four lions the wilder beasts are thousands in number they are all fighting for their space and their survival they are least concerned that the weakest amongst them will be caught by the lions and torn apart and eaten in front of them while they stand and watch 
if we as humans behave in the same way that we chase our own space demand our own space our own success and just demand for ourselves then we will be like that group of wilder beasts it is the essence of being a human that we should be talking about the rights of others and not our own rights those who are not in a position to raise their voice i am at a place where no other organization is working working for a set of children from the most marginalized ignored part of the society not the subject of any prominent news stories not even part of conversations because this is where i am required so the weakest amongst us needs to be helped first that should be our priority we as humans are not physically strong than most animals we cannot run even as fast as an elephant or a buffalo we are the weakest amongst the all the animals on this planet but still we have spread out the most all over the planet survived and thrived just because of a single factor that while animals leave their weak behind we do not we take care of our weak and one day those weak become our strength i was taken care of when i was in the hospital trying to survive that is why i am in a position today to help a larger number while i owe gratitude for those who took care of me when i needed it even today i hold a responsibility for working for those who are not in a position to take care of themselves in this world we see in most of the news stories and popular conversations the issues which are being discussed as issues are issues which will not be even considered or maybe in a way we are laughing at those who are dying of hunger the children who are dying of hunger the children who are being exploited for begging and other forms of exploitation that i do not even want to name i think we are mocking at those children that while you are bothered for survival for hunger for food for respect for dignity we are bothered about other issues that is the first thing which needs to be addressed the weakest link in our society now what is social justice and what is inclusion if i have not mentioned which community caste religion race i have not categorized myself i will only be judged as a person sitting in front of you and conveying my views if i adopt sub identities within the human race i adopt sub identities then i will be identified by those identities those are not inclusionary in nature i will be judged by my race the place i belong to my mother tongue the religion or the absence of one that i follow i will be identified by my sub identities so it would be i who would be to blame if i attach myself with my sub identities 
I am talking to you not as a handicapped speaker because my disability is nowhere a hindrance to my communication with you. My lack of knowledge might be, my lack of control over my language could be, but definitely not my any other disability that I might have. So for this moment, I am not identified by that sub-identity. More we associate with that, more we exclude ourselves from others. Somehow this idea is going around the world that everyone needs to claim their sub-identities. Some of them I have named, there could be thousands more. If we are adopting those sub-identities and not as a human race, not as a person that I am talking to you. Everything else is my personal choice. That is not up for public discussion. What I eat, where I live, what I do in my personal space is nobody's concern. How I behave in public, how I behave with others, do I treat them with respect, with concern, with sensitivity? That is what matters. Even if we are uh, demanding our rights, a wrong way can never lead to the right goal. Wrong way, a wrong path can never lead to the right goal. That you can adopt wrong ways to reach the right goal is politics. Politics may make you believe that, but you can never do that. You can either do politics or you can do social service. You cannot do both. Because politics is the art of coming to power and staying in power, by definition. It is not meant for social service. If you want to do social service, do social service. Political leader is an oxymoron. Political is a representative, he is not a leader. He represents the people, the views of the people. He does not tell the people what to do, what is good for them. A leader is a person who tells the people what is good for them. So a person doing a social service can be a leader because he does not have to cater for or keep consideration for acquiring the votes and popularity of people. He does not have to carry that baggage. So political representative, not political leader. Going further, this human society is a machinery. It works in combination with each other. While every part is significant, every part cannot be visible. So every part needs to be given its due importance. The human society as a whole has been working for a long time and we have been surviving and thriving. So we should not be doubting things which have been working for us. Yes, corrections can be made, but we cannot change the whole machinery because of one part. If you have to drive on traffic roads in the traffic, there have to be general rules. There have to be some common rules of working together. Everybody's every choice cannot be expect, accepted. If in your country you are required to drive on the left, then drive on the left. Don't say that I feel comfort, more comfortable driving on the right. You would, you might be feeling more comfortable driving on the right. But you have to have that common consideration for the whole society to work. Individual choices have complete freedom. No religion of this world and the law of any of the countries out of the nearly 200 prevents anybody from following their personal choices or interferes with them. Those choices always stay with you. But as a society, how we can function better? I am a student of Gandhi. 
a lot of great intellectuals of in our history in the history of the world who have claimed to be students of gandhi prominent ones amongst them nelson mandela martin luther king khan abdul ghafar khan lots of them that comes from that if i protest for my right i should find a way of protesting that does not create violence i should find a way of protesting that does not inconvenience others because if i am being insensitive to others how can i expect them to be sensitive to me how is that even possible other people even if they are being insensitive if you want to correct them the solution is in love the solution is in being sensitive so being insensitive to the people we disagree with being insensitive insensitive towards the people who have no role to play in our getting our rights or not getting our rights like blocking of roads preventing other people to go ahead with their normal lives just because we are demanding something so we should have a way of demanding our rights if there is a place where they are being curtailed in some way and we should find a way which does not inconvenience others and a person you totally disagree with you have to respect his right to hold his opinion as well everyone in this world has the freedom of choice to hold an opinion even if a thief or a robber wants a person wants to become a thief or a robber he has the right to make that choice provided he is okay with the consequences if he is okay with being caught by the police being jailed or being humili- facing humiliation if he is okay with it he can make that choice i have no problems with it there was this person who gave an example that there are two ways of throwing a ball at someone either you can throw the ball hard at his face which will hit him in the face causing some injury or you can toss the ball gently so that he has the option of catching it the same is the method that works when we are making a conversation if we insult the person sitting in front of us for the views that he holds then we are blocking the possibilities of his accepting your view point we are blocking that when law punishes a criminal it is not because law feels very happy about it it is not that we derive pleasure from hanging people or jailing them keeping them in prison for life that is nothing to be happy about it is because we are left with no choice we want that person to reform but if he is a threat to others if he continues to be a threat to others then we have to take measures to prevent that even law does not hate the criminals because it wants the criminals to change it wants to leave that door open that possibility open to change if we hate then what is the difference between us and the criminal we are the same 
so if we want anybody to accept our opinion our viewpoint if that is our intention and not conflict if conflict is not our intention if conflict is something we do not want then we have to learn how to present our views in a more acceptable way respecting the other person's rights to hold his opinion that leaves us the possibility that he may accept it a second way of doing it is by not countering the person in front of you directly by not saying you are wrong but instead presenting in front of him the right example setting the right example and then he has the possibility where he can with dignity accept receive adopt your viewpoint so if our intention is to make a better world the only possibility is if we are sensitive towards others there was this famous indian poet kabir on couplet of his goes kabir soi peer hai jo jaane par peer a pious man is one who understands the pain of others who feels the pain of others if we feel the pain of others that is what puts us apart from animals if we can feel the pain of others and if we can feel the pain of others we will never be troubled by our own pain i was at a seminar where it was being discussed that the countries where women have more freedom of choice are the countries which are doing better in this world as far as the observation goes it is absolutely correct it is so wherever the women have better freedom of choice those societies are doing better economically socially security wise but the inference that was made was that it is because women are half the workforce since they are half the workforce if they have freedom of choice they will work and that is why the economy of that country will be better that was the inference made well that is not a correct inference according to me the real reason is the societies in which the men do not respect the women in those societies in which men do not respect the right to life the right to choice of women they do not respect the right to life of each other as well the right to life and the right to choice of men is also not respected in those societies and that is why those societies degrade start collapsing the societies where women are caned or stoned treated with disrespect those are the very societies where men behead each other openly sensitivity can never be selective you cannot be selective towards your group your sub identity you cannot be sensitive towards it and insensitive towards others sensitivity cannot be selective either you are sensitive about everyone or you are not if i am not sensitive towards 
my enemy my perceived enemy if i am not sensitive towards his welfare that i may have to fight him for my survival if he attacks me but i want good to happen to him i want him to refrain from conflict and war i want him to refrain from not attacking me because i want him also to do well my sensitivity is towards my enemy as well then my sensitivity will be honest with my own people as well otherwise once i have defeated my enemy i will turn my weapons my strengths on my own people conflicts within so we can never do away with sensitivity if we want to bring a change in this world which includes giving rights to those who hold opinion who hold an opinion that is completely against your opinion you have to respect that if you expect that person to respect your views so the other viewpoint which i mentioned in the beginning for inclusion and social justice we the human race we are a football team a sports team because we are social animals we are social animals by our genetics it is our make we are not solitary we are not like a tiger or a leopard we need people we need others you may like meeting less people you may might like meeting more people but you do need people you do need others in your life so as a team the human race if being a part of it you have not made a pass scored a goal defended against the opposition this no contribution from you towards the game irrespective of whether the whole team wins or loses you are going to feel bad the team the human race might develop progress but you will feel bad that you have no contribution to it you did not do anything to you did not do anything to contribute to that success on the other hand if your team loses but you have put in your best you contributed fully then you will be happy and satisfied at least you did your bit so it is very important for us to put in that contribution and in your lifetime you will not be known for what you achieved for yourself you will only be identified by what you give to others just like if you are wearing a red colored t-shirt you will say the color is red actually that object is throwing away red light and keeping all the colors other colors within itself so it is not identified by all the colors of light that it keeps inside itself it is identified by that one color that it is throwing away that it is giving away so irrespective of how much money how much fame how much strength how much power how much acceptance you acquire in your life you will get acceptance of this world only for what you give back to this world what you give back to others i have a face even if it is not very pleasant to look at it is you who has to look at it you look at my face i don't look at my face i might be wearing a costly dress or a shabby cheap dress that i wear it is you who has to look at it it is not my story it is your story because you will be talking about it 
you will be discussing me talking about me holding opinions about me there is nothing that belongs to me you call me by my name you call that name i never call that name you look at my face you look at my dress you look at my car you look at my house you discuss my story there is nothing that belongs to me it's all yours it's all belongs to the world so there comes a time in your life you should be thinking of giving back not just in terms of money in terms of sensitivity in terms of praise you are demanding acceptance start giving it to others you are demanding praise start giving it to others you are demanding that people be understanding towards you start being understanding towards them start giving away and that would be the success of your life no one has ever acquired satisfaction out of achieving a certain amount of fame or money because one acquires satisfaction only out of giving i can beat you with my strength i might be able to i can beat you with my strength but i can win you only with love you cannot win anyone without giving love and understanding so i would rather win the world rather than defeat them with my power so that is my you know whatever i could share from my thoughts what is my present understanding based on my experiences and if anyone who is listening to it i have spoken with responsibility with a sense of responsibility if you feel there is something you can pick from it in some way it can add i would be glad that i have made my contribution that is all thank you so much can i leave the session now or do i have to take questions Uh, thank you so much, sir. You all have stuck a chord with each and every one of us. Your journey is a true testament to the power of the human spirit, especially highlighting the real life examples mentioned by you. The way you touched upon social inclusion as the subject, it surely has guided each one of us to move forward the appropriate way. I would also like to thank you for sharing your experiences and insights. so candidly indeed love should be the approach your wisdom will undoubtedly stay with us guiding is guiding us in our own paths thank you once again for gracing us with your presence and profound words of wisdom thank you so much sir